getting that. You're supposed to use this, aren't you? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Take two. Um, yes, prayer meeting this evening. Now, this is a, as you know, we've been having a prayer meeting on the third Sunday of each month on Zoom. And this is the first one we'll actually come back to church for that meeting because we think it's important to continue that and it will form part of the moment of our evening services, get-togethers, whatever we like to say about that. The other thing is FFF. Now, we've all got one of these, have you? Yes. Good, good, good. Well, come Friday, as you know, FFF was launched on um, the internet, on YouTube, but this Friday we are going live. So, um, if you're involved, that's great. If you want to be involved in some way, see Ian or Cam. That was it. Yeah, you should have been there, Cam. You should have been there. What's your like? And, um, or Ian. And, uh, but if you can't be there, do pray about this. There's events you're hoping that we can get together with young families who bring the children along. We're going to have a meal and hopefully we'll get to know them at their level and be able to communicate God's word and gospel to them. So do pray about that. I don't know if Reza's here. Is Reza here? No. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, Reza is on our Iranian friends and he's been with us for a number of months. Uh, and he's his last Sunday this Sunday if he, if he comes. But he'll be going to London after this. So... Uh, Please pray for him as he goes down there and may find a church that's good for him to attend. Um, the other thing is that, uh, as we know, Judy Green's husband died, that's Barry, died earlier on this week, or last Monday actually, and the funeral service of that will be here at GBC on Wednesday the 29th at 11.15am. So if you feel that's something you'd like to attend, then... Do so, but also please pray for Judy at this time as she makes the arrangements uh, for the funeral of her husband. Andrew will be there taking that service, so uh, please pray for him too as he takes the service. Let's just open now with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for who you are, for what you've done through us and Jesus, we thank you that we can gather here this morning knowing that if we put our trust in you, then we are truly redeemed and sons and daughters of yourself and we have a hope of eternity with you. Lord, we just commit everything to you this morning that through your word, through the songs that we sing, whatever takes place in our worship, it will bring glory to your name and that we may see more of you more clearly and be able to go out of this service this morning knowing that we are one step closer to knowing you better. Your spirit will be more revealed in our lives and we'll be look, continue to look to you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Just one thing I think I was going to say. Oh, that was it. Sorry. Yeah, there was one other thing I was going to say. If you're here for the first time, very welcome. If you're here second time, not so. No. <laughs> Whatever. If you're here. But I just met a lady coming down the drive and she was her second time here. Really great to see you. Make yourself known to us. I'm one of the deacons, as you probably gathered. You may want to speak to me, but I understand if you don't. Uh, so... <laughs> You know, but it's really great to have you here. Really good. Let's just read some words from Psalm 103. It says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that you, your youth is renewed like the eagles. And it's over to Matty now, because that's the song we will start with. God bless. 
going to begin our worship this morning, coming together to remind ourselves of these incredible truths. As we come together and we sing, praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring. Uh, and I just think we can all come together this morning and we just want to open our hearts uh, and be there uh, with God this morning. So we're going to sing, praise my soul, the King of heaven. <clears throat> if you'd like to stand and join us. <clears throat> Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, who like me his praise should sing. during this song um, but our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness we're going to sing cornerstone Christ alone <laughs> I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. But holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak and made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of Darkness seems to hide his face. 
with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Christ alone. this offering this morning, an offering of our time, an offering of our hearts uh, and our offer uh, financially as well, Lord. I pray that you would use this money uh, to further your kingdom and that you'd just build us all up this morning uh, as we hear your word. Amen. Am I on? Yes. Right. Morning, everyone. Morning. Now, then, in front of you, you see an oldie worldie flippy charty. <laughs> because, as, a, as an old teacher who's got 40 years behind her, she's not very good with technology, so I thought we'd bring in the, the old fashioned stuff. So, morning. Um, we've got the. Um, we're going to be listening to Jeremy's preach on the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. And um, I had a little idea earlier about the newness of a, a new term. Obviously, as a teacher, I'm, my heart is with um, the children and the teachers and the schools right now um, as we embark on another academic year. Um, I always think in academic years, having been in education all my life, so I always, my year goes from September through to July, so that's the way I think anyway. But would you just wave your hand at me? First of all, wave your hand at me if you are smiling. <laughs> good, that's good, that's a good start. Now, just wave your hand if you are involved in education in any way, whether as a... Right, thank you, Tony. Hang on, hold on, I haven't finished yet. If you're in any way involved in education, whether that's as a pupil, um, a, a student, a university student, um, wherever you might be, or as a teacher, a teacher's aide, working in a school in any capacity, just would you wave your hand, please? Anybody uh, with, involved with TOTS? Anybody involved with uh, young children in the puppet group? Anybody else that might be involved in education? Anyway, right, OK, I, I was expecting to see a, full, a, a room probably full. What about anybody that's been involved with homeschooling? <laughs> During COVID? Anybody? Yes, OK. We've had a tough couple of years, as uh, everybody has, but my heart, has, as I say, it's been very burdened with what's been going on in the schools and the fact that our children's uh, lives have been really, really disrupted this, um, this last while. Um, and life is full of really difficult challenges, and even more so now. Um, and I, that was singing in Christ alone. What a wonderful reminder to us that we have everything that we need in Christ in these times. But I just wanted to have a... This is where you join in, 
uh, and I'm just going to move over here. I just want you to think about the start of a new academic year. We're faced with all sorts of newness. We're faced with change, and we're faced with differences, things that are different. So I, where are all the children? I can't see them. We've got... Put your hand up if you're less than 90. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> right, OK. Start, start of a new year, and do all contribute, so children don't leave it to the grown-ups, grown-ups don't leave it to the children. But what, what things are new, what things are different, what things might have changed as we embark on, an, on a new academic year? Sorry? New teachers, thank you very much, Stephen. Teachers could well be new, yeah. OK, what else is new? New schools or universities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, shout it out. Getting them to the bus stop on time. <laughs> Is that new? Isn't that always the case? <laughs> might be. Might be a new bus. Could be a new bus. New bus journey. Yeah. What else? Hygiene routine. Say that to Hygiene routine. Hygiene routine. Okay. Could be a new hygiene routine. I.e. that. If the children are just starting, they might have to clean their teeth now, as opposed to... Mm -hmm. Yeah? Anything else new? Routine. Routine. Sorry? Yep, I had that one in my head, yeah. New uniform? So, one of the children, Evie, Eva. Or oh, George. What's been new for you? Lessons. New lessons? Yeah, good. What's, yes, he's got his hand up. Isaac. Isaac, sorry, Isaac. What's, what's, been, new, what's been new for you, darling? Um, new lessons. New lessons, right. Has anything been different in school with regards to COVID? Can I ask a teacher, Karen, let me put you on the spot. Anything new regards COVID regulations or any? Um, it's better than what it was, but still constant hand washing. Right. Up to 10 times a day. Okay, really? So that, oh, that ties in with the hygiene there, doesn't it? Of course, to do with COVID, yeah, absolutely. OK, so lots of things that are new, lots of things that are different, and lots of things that involve change. So... I love equations and algebra, don't you? <laughs> Not. Um, so this is as good as it gets for me. Um, so I put together this thinking, new plus different, what can that mean? What can that mean to us emotionally? Because it's bound to have an effect, all these things that are challenging us. So let me ask one of the little ones, if they don't mind. I don't know whether George would like to, to answer this one. No, he doesn't. OK, right. Maybe his mum would like to answer. Um, when things are new and when they're different, how does that make you feel? What might be a, an emotion there? Anybody? Sorry? You could be excited. OK, now they're coming. Right, OK. Could make you feel excited, but it could also make you feel... Anxious. Anxious. Yeah. So you can go in. Confidence. Pardon? Confidence. What, you might feel more confident or less? No, less confident. Right. You could mean less confidence. See where I'm going with this, if you know the passage that we're look, going to be looking at. Yes. Nonplussed. I say, Mason. Nonplussed. I used to feel that every, the beginning of every term I felt nonplussed. Thinking, oh no, what's this term going to hold? Right, anybody else got a better one than nonplussed? Come on, now's a challenge. Oh, yes. I'll just put this. Discom. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't used a flip chart for a few years. Um, any advance on discombobulated? Mason? <laughs> oh, now, that, hang on a minute. Is this, is this a literary lesson we've got going on here now? Is this literacy and, and numeracy? So we've got un, uh, unabashed. Right, which what I think is the opposite to nonplus, isn't it? Anyway. Right. OK. Any, any, one, anyone, 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 what about the start of a Fun Family Friday, new Fun Family Friday live, how's that going to make you feel? 
A? Well, excited. Excited, okay, we've got that one. Right, excited, okay. Discouraged? You might feel discouraged, yes, absolutely. Okay. There's, there's going to be a big range of emotions and feelings when we meet with newness and when we meet with difference. But let's think about the passage in front of us that the disciples, knowing that Jesus was going to be leaving them, would be feeling many of these things. Life was never going to be the same again for them. It was going to be very, very different and very, very new um, in, in acutely challenging times. And Jesus knew that. Um, and so he prays. He prays the high priestly prayer for his disciples, for his children. And that applies to us as well. Everything's going to be new. It's going to be very, very, very different. And so throughout the prayer, and not just in the verses that we're going to look at today, but throughout the prayer, he doesn't promise, the Lord doesn't promise to preserve us from trouble. But what he does do is that he'll be with us through, he will preserve us through that trouble. Amen. We're not going to be, we, we can't avoid it. We can't avoid the challenges in life and the, the battles and the storms that we've just sung about. But what we can do is know the full knowledge and how encouraging is that, that he will be with us Amen. throughout those storms. And it's just, it's just wonderful. How awesome is that, that he is there? Um, throughout all these changing circumstances. And I do think, um, and I'm going to say that again later, but really let's think about our children and our young ones. Um, I know that Matthew and Diana are taking uh, Joel to university this afternoon, so there's a lot of people saying goodbye for the first time to their little ones, for the, not their little ones, but their older ones. And, and that's even if, you know, if you've got children that have just started school and, and they, that they're leaving you for the first time. So um, it's a challenging time. Verses 15 to 17, Jesus says, I do not ask that you take them out of this world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth of your word. So I think we've got to remember how challenging it is, not only for us to be shining lights in a dark world, but how challenging it is for our children to be distinct, to be luminous, to be engaged, to be different, because it's a battle. They're up against a the battle, they're against the flow. It's not what it's about in, in, the, in the secular world, in the outside world. Um, so we must pray for the children, pray for them daily. If you know their names, pray, pray for them by name. And if we forget, then there's one wonderful thing that we can hold on to, is that Jesus is praying for us. He's Amen. interceding for us at times that we perhaps don't even know what to pray about and how marvellous is that. So cling on to that if you're ever struggling in any way, in any circumstance or in school with something that's new, something that, that is strange, something that might be frightening. Jesus is praying for us. We are his children. Amen. Amen. We are his children. And he says... I am praying for them. He's praying for his children. He's praying for them. Us, that's us. He's praying for us now. In the previous chapter, Jesus gives this um, wonderful reassurance to his disciples, and therefore that's to us as well. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. You'll be discombobulated. But take heed, I have overcome the world. Amen. So that is a wonderful truth. It's a promise. And he will be with us always until the end of time. Always and forever. Amen. So I'm just going to pray for us all. I pray particularly for the children at this time. So Father God, we thank you that you are with us all the time we thank you for your love you th we thank you that you you have chosen us and we are your children lord we ask that you are with us throughout these trials and tribulations of life and particularly for those youngsters those little ones and the older ones 
who are facing changes and differences in school, in their, whether it's homeschooling, uh, in the infant school, the juniors, the secondary schools, the universities and colleges. Lord, be with them. Let them know your presence and let them know that you're praying for them. We pray that our children will be strengthened in you, that they can go out into the world and be lights for you. They can be in the world, but not of it. That people will know that they're special, that they're, they're yours. Lord, I would encourage, ask you to help and encourage our children to pray for each other, to pray for their friends, to pray for their teachers, to pray for their families. Help them pray, Lord. Your disciples asked you, Lord, teach us how to pray. And you did, and you do. And we just thank you, Lord, that you are with us. We're here to eternity, and we thank you, Lord. And I'll pray for the children. They'll be going out to their classes very soon. Be with them, Lord. Be with their teachers. Make them receptive with open ears to your word. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for our prayers. Father, without your help, we can't begin to worship you and offer our appreciation of who you are. We ask for your spirit as we pray. Thank you for all your gifts to us. Forgive us that we've often not used them wisely or shared them fairly. Thank you for the forgiveness we have through the blood of Jesus and the renewal the Holy Spirit brings us. Lord, we pray as you taught us to for all the governments of the world, in particular for our own. We pray they can have enough control for people to live in peace, but not so much that they prevent people hearing your good news. We ask you to restrain evil in the world. We pray for Afghanistan and all the parts of Africa and the Middle East where people are being terrorized. Lord, we pray about surveillance on the internet and all the false information there too. We pray for the millions of people who haven't had any chance to be vaccinated yet. Lord, we pray you will strengthen all those who work for good especially your church. We pray for this church. Father, help parents to teach their children about you. Help us all to reach out to our friends and workmates. Especially help those in dangerous situations abroad, trying to share the good news. Lord, we pray for those just starting university or new jobs. We pray for them to know your guidance and help. Father, help this church in what it's doing now. Protect, help, and guide all our leaders. Be present in our church meeting on the 29th. We ask for your guidance and strength for all those putting on the regular weekly events now. Lord, the children's events, the house groups, cameo, we pray for new ideas and also for the new Fun Family Friday. Father, we especially pray for those who are sick and grieving. And we lift up Judy, Judy Green and all the family as they grieve the loss of Barry. We ask for your comfort and help for them through all the funeral arrangements and all the changes that this brings we ask you to comfort, strengthen, and guide them. We now have a minute's silence for everyone to lift up silently all those you know 
who are sick, suffering, or carrying very heavy burdens, please lift their names up to God now silently. So, Lord, we bring all these people to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for hearing our prayers. Amen. Thank you, Anita. We're going to sing uh, one more song before the kids go out to their classes. Um, it's a, a quick word from uh, Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I've taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Amen. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. And we're going to sing of his word now before we hear and come together uh, to listen to his word today. So if you'd like to stand and join us. Your word is good, it's ever faithful, worth more than gold, the heart's delight. Your word gives life to all who hear and obey. Your word endures forever. Your word is true. Thing. 
So today we're reading from John 17, verses 11 to 19. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you had given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them have been lost, except the son of destruction, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. Amen. Well, good morning to you. Grace and peace to you all. Amen. Amen. Good. And we are continuing um, this morning in our journey through the high priestly prayer. And I find this so encouraging, so uplifting, and such a comfort. And it is a privilege to be preaching through this passage. It's a privilege to be preaching through any part of God's word, but particularly this part of scripture. As I think that this high priestly prayer is not only just a high point in John's gospel, but a high point in the Bible. And, and we will look at that as we come to unpack it together. The words will be on the screen. I look forward to the day when we can open God's word, our Bibles together and have them in our hands, but you will find the verses on the screen as they come up. So I think the first thing that we really need to do this morning is ask for God's help as we come before his word. Let's pray together. Father God, we so thank you for who you are and what you have done, revealing yourself and your work to us through your word. And Father, as we come to these passages this morning, these so deep and profound words that you have brought as the Lord Jesus prays to yourself. Father, would you open our ears, minds, and lift our hearts this morning and equip your people with the joy and peace and knowledge and love of the truth so that we leave this place changed for your glory. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
So I think if we, can we put the first slide up for me, please? No, the next one. Right, I've got a quiz. I'm going to start with a quiz this morning, but I have to say it is a quiz that I don't think you'll probably get the answers to. So don't feel that if you get the answer wrong, it's fine. It's not an issue. Um, this is probably historical. I thought one person might have a clue. I don't know if he's, yes, he is here. I won't mention his name, but his initials begin with John Wilson. He might be able to get those. <laughs> So I wonder if you can tell me who these men are. Has anybody got any idea? Anybody? Fine, no problem. It is difficult. I did say that you probably wouldn't. So can we put the answers up, please? There we go. We have there Sir Titus Salt, William Hesketh Lever, and I've left his name before he was ennobled, George Cadbury and Joseph Roundtree. So what do these men have in common? Sorry? Revival. Could be, yeah. Some are, yeah. That's right. One wasn't, but the others were. Businessmen. They were all businessmen. They were philanthropists. They were businessmen who promoted the welfare of others. You see, these businessmen, all of them had a purpose and a goal, and that was to sell their goods and services to the world. Yes, the cynical amongst us will also say that they made money, which is what business is for. But what they did was that they gathered their workers, their people, together, and they took them out of poverty. They built villages and towns for them to live in, with schools, amenities, churches. And Joseph Rowntree even built an old folks home for those workers after they'd finished in his employ. They were men that understood that they gathered, they gathered people together for a goal and purpose that they had set. Now I want us to have this image in our mind. It is only a pale reflection of the passage that we are looking at this morning. But it is a reflection of it. So the title for what we're going to look at this morning could be The Preservation of the Saints for a Glorious Purpose. The Preservation of the Saints for a Glorious Purpose. Now last week after Matthew had finished preaching, we all gathered outside. It was a lovely day and I happened to be chatting to Colin Lamb. And Colin said to me, Jeremy, how are you? I said, I'm fine. I gave that standard stock answer. And then I looked at him and I said, actually, Colin, I'm not. I said, in the last few days and weeks, I have been feeling a little bit down, a little bit discouraged. He said, what's the cause of that then? I said, actually, I can't put my finger on it. And then we started talking about Matthew's sermon, and I just expressed that I'd started to prepare for this week. And I said, and I was being encouraged by this word, and it was encouraging me. So I want to say to you this morning, thank you for Colin for speaking to me, but also the fact that I will be preaching this for me to hear God speaking just as much for us all to hear God speaking this morning. We need to cleave to these words in this passage. So I do hope and pray that we will all leave this place with hope and encouraged. So here we have the Lord Jesus praying directly to his heavenly Father, And he's praying to the person that he has been in an eternal relationship with. Jesus being truly God, we've got one person of the Godhead praying to another person of the Godhead Godhead, in line with their predestined plan of salvation and redemption. And it's also that Jesus, being truly human and being our high priest, interceding for us, petitioning God for us. It is, if you like, a picture of the high priest in the tabernacle in the Old Testament, in the very presence of God, in the holy of holies, face to face with God, pleading for us. Jesus here is, in effect, putting his arms around every true believer down through the centuries. From the beginning of human existence to however long there is left before he returns. 
It's also because our Heavenly Father will always answer Jesus' prayers and therefore we can have great confidence and take great comfort and as we come to look at a little bit further on, have great joy in this. It's all there actually if you look in Ephesians 1.3 who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. However, this uh, passage is so deep, it's impossible, it's impossible to plumb the depths of all we have in these eight verses in the time that we have together. In effect, we will only be skimming the surface. Dr. Steve Lawson, who is an American theologian and pastor, once preached a whole series through uh, John 17. And there are 26 verses in John 17. Guess how many sermons he preached? You've got it. 26. And even he said, we didn't even reach the pearls at the bottom. So let's dive in and start with verse 11. And can I just put that in context here? We've got to remember uh, that, uh, that in putting in context with the whole chapter, Jesus is praying for all his people. He's specifically praying for his disciples at this point. But, but as we know from verse 6 and 40, also that encompasses all his people. Those who have been saved by Christ alone through faith alone. And as Matthew said last week, to those who believe. Those who believe and who have turned away from their sin and turned to Christ in repentance. So let's look at verse 11. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. And the first thing that struck me when looking at this passage and looking at those verses is the way in which Jesus refers to his Father, Holy Father. Jesus here gives an acknowledgement and a reminder of the holiness of God. And it's a further reminder from verse 6 where Jesus speaks of manifesting your name, the Father God's name. Manifesting, meaning making known, revealing, declaring, pointing to the character, the character and person of God. Here we are reminded of the, in this part of his character, the most important part of his character, of his holiness. It also echoes again that high priest of the Old Testament interceding in the Holy of Holies. You see, I and indeed we all need to be reminded of and grow in the knowledge of God's holiness. As this holiness is reflected back, we see more clearly as our walk goes on the seriousness and the depth of our rebellion and sin and therefore the greater magnificence of our redemption and salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. And secondly, these verses in verse 11 are echoing verse 3, where Jesus says, the time has now come. Jesus prays that he is coming to his Father. It tells us he's going from this location, and that's not specified where it is. It tells us he's going to the Garden of Gethsemane, to his rest, and this culmination of Jesus' finished work upon the cross. And then there's some really profound words within there. But they are in the world and keep them in your name which you have given me that they may be one even as we are one. So if we remember from last week, Jesus is specifically referring to this small group, those who have given, been given to him by the Father at this stage. And that's mainly the 11 disciples who are left. They are still in the world and are among those, they are living among those who do not have regenerate hearts. They do not have a new heart given to them by God. And therefore, they are living amongst those that are against God and against the things of God. And we know how that's also described in the book of Ephesians in chapter 2, verse 2. Following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of the disobedience. In other words, the world and the devil, the evil one. 
And Jesus is praying here that they may be kept from the world and the evil one and that they may be kept in your name and be one as we are one. See, God's name, as I alluded to earlier, is, this, is his revealed character. It's his revealed character through his word. In fact, he says it himself. He says, I am who I am. I am the I am. And they are to be kept in God's character at one with him. As it says in Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs to it and is safe. Actually, the best way to illustrate this is what Tony stated a few weeks ago. Jesus here is praying that they and we are to put on that full armour of God, to put on God, that we should be as one as Christ comes to live within us by his Holy Spirit. And then our response should be to put on Christ, as this is our only protection against the world and the devil. Jesus is praying here that the Holy Spirit will be at work in us so that we will put on Christ by God's power and his alone. Praise God. And then in verse 12, Jesus states that while he has been here, they have been in his, Jesus' protection. And then he says, which you have given me, I have guarded them, and not one has been lost except the son of destruction, that scripture may be fulfilled. The son of destruction is re referring to Judas, Judas Iscariot, the betrayer. Why is that in there? Why does Jesus pray that? Why is it in God's word? Well, I actually think it's twofold. Firstly, there is a warning. There is a warning to those who are not saved, who do not believe, just like Judas. They are on the road to destruction, or in another version, the road to perdition. To destruction, perdition, the same thing. Do you remember that Tom Hanks film? The road to perdition, the road to destruction. That's the road they're on, just like Jesus. Just like Judas, sorry. Didn't Jesus say of Judas, it would have been better that he had never been born. And in Acts 1, verse 20, the apostles are discussing and, 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 and working out how to replace Judas. And Peter quotes Psalm 41.9 and 109, verse 8, to those in the upper room, encouraging the 120 that are there, that this was part of God's plan before the foundation of the earth. And they are assured that Judas was a goat, not a sheep. He was never saved and never one of God's people. It was scripture fulfilled. And they and therefore we should understand there will always be those in church life who do not know Jesus. But we should know that God is sovereign and be totally exalted and encouraged by that. Secondly, and in a way much more importantly, this verse should give us reassurance that if any doubt you can lose your salvation, you can't. It is a pillar of God's grace that if you are saved in Christ by grace alone, through faith alone, God will not let you go. Again, in last week's sermon, which pointed to once your identity is rooted and grounded in Christ, you are a child of God. And it is for eternity, absolutely. Jesus is praying here, is he not? That not one has been lost, and therefore not one will be lost, despite however I feel or any of us feel at the time. Our eternal salvation is absolutely secure. Again, praise God. Amen. And then we come to verse... 13. And we were reminded in these words, what causes joy in our hearts is the knowledge of the truth. As we grow in the truth of the knowledge of scripture, grow in the knowledge of sound doctrine, as we grow in the knowledge of God and therefore grow in our relationship and love for God through Jesus, that this 
is the primary means which joy floods into our very hearts and our very souls. And as we heard from Colin in, when he brought us words from John 15 earlier in the year, verse 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. And as we come further on to verses 14 to 16, we can see why Jesus has prayed these things for his disciples being kept in his name and the full joy of the Lord as he is aware exactly of what they are about to face. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Jesus is saying here, Father, I have given them your word, the truth, and the world hates them, and the purposes that we have, Father, Son, God, Holy Spirit, have for them do you know brothers and sisters what is true of the disciples then is true of us today as we stand on the truth of God's word the world because it's under the power of Satan and he sows confusion and misunderstanding and disbelief and blinds the world from the goodness of God and he tempts the world into pleasures of the here and now and distracts from that eternal future that we have and all places, all who are in the world, on that road to perdition, just like Judas. Make no mistakes, brothers and sisters. The world hates us as we stand on things like marriage between one man and one woman, as ordained, as ordained by God. And all sexual pleasure and joy being in context of that marriage to the exclusion of everything else and as we stand on those issues of gender understanding that our gender is preordained by God and as we are born the world doesn't understand that if we lived as God has prescribed in his words and we Christians have problems with this sometimes as well if we lived as God has prescribed in his word We would not have any of the problems of violence in marriage, divorce, unwanted babies, sexually transmitted diseases. They simply wouldn't exist. And there also wouldn't be increasing rates of gender reassignment reversal, severe depression and rising suicide in our utterly confused young people. The world hates us. The world hates us as it sows its seeds of destruction. And we stand on the things that God has designed for us to flourish in. The world of unregenerate hearts will always be opposed to and flee from the things of God. The world lives in cosmic treason to all the things of God. But then Jesus prays in verse 15 and 16. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Just like the disciples here, the Lord Jesus prays that we should be part of this world, but protected against Satan and his lies. Jesus' prayer of protection here will not allow uh, uh, Satan to turn a believer into non-believer. And have we not seen that played out with the disciples and in their lives with all the opposition that they endured, nearly all becoming martyrs and dying, declaring the truth of God? What an encouragement that is to us as God, we see God increasing their strength and their faith. But the answer to why we should remain in the world is contained in these last verses. 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Verse 19. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they may also be sanctified in truth. The word sanctify, you see, has a Hebrew root, meaning separate, Just like the word holy, set apart for God, torn apart, 
turning to away from. And we've spoken much of sanctification in recent days and months. And it's this setting apart, tearing apart from trespass of sin and setting us on a way to righteousness, setting towards and conforming us to be more like the Lord Jesus himself. So Jesus is praying here that as he was sent into the world by his heavenly father, and he was set apart and sanctified on the cross of Calvary to declare the truth of God and the truth of the gospel. So Jesus is now sending his disciples in the world to be witnesses to that truth. The great commission is on the table here. Just remind ourselves those words at the end of Matthew. Jesus came came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. Behold, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And we know, don't we, friends, brothers and sisters, that we are called to this great commandment also. To go out into every nook and cranny of our local community and the world and to declare the great truth and the great news of the gospel. But, but, we are to do it in a sanctified manner, a Christ like manner. Not ducking the truth in any way, but doing it with humility, gentleness, and sensitivity remembering that we are not the judge and we cannot be or even seem to be judgmental we are to show the same love that Christ has shown us and patience that Christ has shown us through his love dealing especially when we come to deal with and we are faced with those sensitive issues of marriage sexuality and gender Also engaging with loved ones and family members and close friends is especially difficult, isn't it? We often have to walk on eggshells, but be encouraged, be uplifted. Jesus has come before his Father God and he's upholding you in prayer in these situations. If we engage with people in the world with gentleness and respect, we may get that opportunity, share scripture And it's truth. And then the Holy Spirit can be at work. And change an unregenerate heart to a regenerate one. And we will be used for God's glory. The very thing we were created and redeemed for. And the reality which declares this. To declare this possible is in that verse 19. It is the declared, finished, sanctified or set apart work of Jesus on the cross. When Jesus died on that cross, we spiritually died and separated from our old self with him. And as he rose from the dead, we rose to a new life connected in him and for him. There is sanctifying power in the death and resurrection of Christ just as it says in 2 Corinthians 5:15 and he died for all that those who might live no longer live for themselves but for him who for their sake died and was raised so we see in these verses this morning both the disciples and all true believers down through time have been prayed for by our Lord Jesus Christ to his heavenly father And he's prayed for us to be in the Father's name, at one with the I am, in the palm of his hand. And that none shall be lost or go down that path or road of destruction. We are to be protected from the hatred of the world and from the clutches of Satan. We also have been prayed for that we are to be sanctified by the truth of the word of God. And our response being prayed for is that we live as those who are available 
for service of the gospel. And we are to be used by God for the advancement of the kingdom and God's glory. But most of all, brothers, sisters, friends, we are to be filled with joy. And our great priest continues to intercede for us today, sitting at the right hand of God. So if we pray these things in our prayers, we are absolutely sure that they will be answered, as James reminds us at the beginning of his letter. Praise God for his grace and our protection uh, for us. So if you're with us this morning and you've seen something of God's glory or how he shows love for his people, how he keeps them and protects them and protects those, yet you here are still on that road to perdition or destruction of eternal doom, please come to speak with either myself or Melvin or any of the deacons here this morning. We would love to talk with you pray with you God willing lead you to Christ let's pray Father God you show how much you love us when the Lord Jesus prayed for us in that place he prayed for our protection He prayed that we are to be your instruments by your grace for your glory. Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill everyone this morning here to overflowing that we may go from glory to glory and that we leave this place so that we can be, as Jude prayed earlier, distinct because we're different and set apart luminous because we are in Christ and Christ is in us and engaged with a dark world because it's part of your predestined plan of gathering people to yourself for eternity. And we pray these things in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to his, yet not through anything that I have done, but through Christ in me. If you'd like to stand and join us in singing, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Jesus, my Redeemer, there is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is wholly bound to Him. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark. Savior, he will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need his power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley he will Been one and I shall over.
has said that he will bring me home and day by day I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne to this I hold my hope is only Jesus all the glory evermore to Him when the race is complete still my lips shall repeat yet not I but through Christ in me to this I Yet not I, but Christ in me. We started off this morning to join in worship, and it's been a pleasure to worship with you all this morning. But it's all glory to him, and it's all because of him we're here at all. Now, if you're here this morning for the first time, that's great. If you're here for many years, that's great too. But most of all, It'd be wonderful if you don't know Jesus now to know him before you leave this morning. Because it's only through him that we have the victory. It's only through him we can have true joy in our lives today. Amen. So let's just close now with a word of the grace. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen and God bless you through this week.